Hey folks, today I want to take a look at alternate tuning, at least some of the basics of alternate tuning just to get those of you who are interested in this sort of thing started. Uh, so I won't be going into a whole lot of theory or uh, any crazy alternate tunings or anything. Um, we'll just take a look at some basic stuff. So if you're not interested in alternate tuning, uh, that's fine, but I would suggest, uh, very highly suggest that you learn at least the basics of one or two alternate tunings because having um, the ability to uh, navigate the guitar that is tuned alternately uh, can be a very powerful thing to use in both your writing and your performing. You can find that it can, uh, it can be very useful and, and take you uh, to new levels of playing and it really inspires creativity and um, yeah so it's just a really good thing to do. So I want to take a look at uh, a couple of probably some of the most common alternate tunings. Um, I'm not going to take a look at drop D. Uh, I know that's, I guess, considered an alternate tuning, but it's one string, and I've already done a lesson uh, with a drop D riff in it. Um, but I want to take a look at uh, dadgad um, and then open C. So here's dadgad. Um, it's really simple. It's D A D G A D. Going from the sixth string to the first, it spells dadgad. So, so it's very nice. If you just play it open. It's a D suspended fourth chord. That's what it is. Just a D sus, uh, a D sus four. Um, uh, so, what you have to do with this first is experiment with it. You don't have to know scales. You don't have to really know what any of the notes are on the neck for this. Uh, so, good news for some of you people who really have no interest at all uh, when it comes to learning any kind of theory. Um, experiment. Start with single strings. Um, just single string stuff and it can be really easy you, you might find that some of these alternate tunings are really easy to play in fact there are a number of um, artists out there who will tune their guitars alternately they'll basically tune the guitar to a chord and just make one finger chords um, all the way up the neck and that's all they do um, or maybe not all they do but most of what they do um, Goo Goo Dolls anybody a fan of them so if you you know, playing some of these Goo Goo Dolls tunes is where I got into alternate tunings and then from there I got more interested in it started listening to guys like Andy McKee and Don Ross and uh, Sean Hopper if you don't know who those guys are go check them out they do some really cool things with alternate tunings um, but you don't necessarily have to be that proficient with it um, you can just do these one finger chords now here's some chords uh, and I'll have all these tabbed out on the website uh, andrewsmusiccorner.com there'll be a link for it on YouTube um, but here's here's some examples of chords. So if you're basically in D, yeah. So um, this doesn't mean that you have to stay in the key of D. We'll talk about that in a second. But chords like G, it's now going to be located here like this. I'm muting the fifth string because uh, you, you don't really want to hear that when you're just playing a basic G. But this is a really interesting sounding G. It's like a G add nine or something like that, but don't worry about that. But the fingering is like this. You've got the sixth string uh, and the fifth fret. That's where your G note is now. And then you're also going to be fretting on the third string on the fourth fret. So you can use whatever finger combination works best for you. Take that same chord shape and bring it up here. And you have A. So this is what a major chord is going to look like. A minor chord would be when you go up to B minor next. There we go. That's more like it. Then the uh, the frets space out a little bit more. So now instead of being one fret apart, we're two frets apart. So you're on the ninth fret of the sixth string, and you're on the seventh fret of the third string. stuff not a whole lot you know I'm, I'm, I'm using two fingers at the most with some of these chords um, if you just want to change keys just use a capo uh, or do what I do normally I, I don't have it like this now but I tune my guitar an entire step down uh, so that when I'm playing in dadgad I'm actually uh, playing in C uh, I just like having two frets 
on that side of the guitar. So I tune everything down an entire step. I think it just gives me more options because I don't typically like to capo up really high. Um, but just by capoing, you can change uh, keys. So you don't have to stay limited to maybe playing in D or G or A. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit about that. Let's take a look at another tuning. All right, so here's another fun one to do. I really like this tuning. Uh, it's somewhat new to me in that I haven't played a whole lot of it, um, but I really like it. It's an open C tuning. Now these open tunings, uh, they're really designed to be open. Um, I mean, of course they don't have to be, but they sound really great because I'm tuned to a C chord. Uh, so that gives me all kinds of cool possibilities to play big, open, loud chords, and it's a lot of fun. They really fill up a space. Um, so, of course, you know, in open C, um, your tuning is like this. You've got C, G, C, G, C, and then E. So you just have C, G, and E. Um, the, uh, the notes that make up a C chord. So just C, G, C, G, C, E. You can take the same approach that you do with, uh, with any open tuning like we just did with Dadgad and just moving around one string at a time. Try to find notes that work and notes that don't work. that kind of experimentation. What I really like to do with drop C, or open C, um, I should say, uh, drop C is different. With open C, I like to do kind of these bar chords, uh, kind of these partial bar chords where you make a chord uh, by barring, I'm just going to bar the low three strings, the sixth, uh, fifth, and fourth, across the fifth fret, and then... The reason I'm barring is because you can either just use those three notes or you can take any of these free fingers and place them on different areas and see what you get. Uh, so let's say I'll place it on the, um, I'll, I'll take a pinky or a third finger, whatever is more comfortable, um, and go to the seventh fret of the fourth string, say. try to figure out some of these chords because as you experiment you want to you want to know what chords you're playing um, and so again I'm not going to get too much into the theory of this but um, just if you know this is a C you just go C D E F you know just try to find the notes if you want to cheat and um, you know you can use a tuner it's not really cheating it's just a okay it's cheating um, so then you can find it okay this is an F chord it's a type of F chord and then you have a G and then here's an A. You can kind of play this for an A minor. So that's kind of fun, kind of a B flat. Very interesting chord. And I've done nothing. I've not changed anything except for the frets. Uh, the, the spacing is the same. Uh, the fingering is the same. Experiment with that, okay, so now maybe move, instead of uh, having a finger here on the, uh, the fourth string, have it on the third string. See, it's not going to work on that one, so you've got to change things up a little bit. You need to move it there. Or... So all the while keeping you know these notes open, you can also kind of experiment by fretting some of these higher notes, and then you get this nice contrast of some really low notes with really high notes. You uh, you you can span a, a very large range of frequencies uh, with some of these um, these alternate tunings, uh, which makes for really great coffee house music when it's just one guitar player and you make everybody else around you forget that you are just one guitar player. You can sound like a couple of different guitars with some of these sounds. So they're really fun. Okay, I will post up uh, some examples of those chords from both the tunings. Uh, one final note on the tunings, make sure that you're in tune. And when you're tuning these, it's going to take a few times 
uh, you know, going a couple of passes going through each string because they're going to continue to stretch as you do some of these tunings your guitar may not be used to, um, or rather the strings aren't used to. And go slowly when you're tuning some of these. Don't go too fast. You don't want to put too much pressure on a string too quickly because that'll break a string a lot of times. And let me tell you something, when you're plucking on a string and tuning and then it breaks and it comes up here and it slaps you in the hand and it cuts you, um, uh, that's when you start to slow down. <laughs> so don't learn the hard way like I have many times. Um, and you don't want to put too much pressure on the neck or the bridge too quickly either. You want to go nice and slow, um, just making sure that, that everything is okay on the guitar. Um, all right, so if you want to get more into alternate tunings, if this is something you're really interested in, if you maybe want to learn the theory behind it, contact me. As always, I'm here teaching right here on this little camera, um, live one-on-one -on -one with people all the time. So contact me for a free one if you'd like, andrewsmusiccorner.com. Again, the link will be below the video on YouTube. Uh, from there, you can find uh, the tablatures from this lesson and other lessons. All right, I'll see you next time.